What is up y'all, Riley here, and today I've got some new manga, some new comics, and some new action figures to talk about, so stay tuned. Like I mentioned, it's a haul video today, and I'm not only hauling some books, but also some action figures. I am a collector of action figures. I don't have a huge collection, but a decent enough one, and I've never really talked about it much on my channel, so I thought I'd take a moment to look at those today and experiment a bit and see what you guys think. If you enjoy me talking about the figures, then I'll do more figure talk in the future, um, but trust me, it's all comic-related stuff anyway, so not really off-topic for the channel. I know that usually I separate my manga and my comic hauls, but I had a couple of volumes of manga that came in recently that I figured were not enough to do an individual video for and I'd go ahead and just talk about them now. So let's go ahead and look at these books. Um, first, this is a much older volume and this is definitely a reader copy. This is a somewhat more rare book. Um, I decided to look into picking up some older Rumiko Takahashi work since I'm currently reading Urusei Yatsura and we have the new volumes of My Sonny Koku coming out and the new edition of uh, the Mermaid Saga is going to be coming out pretty soon too. So I tracked down a pretty beat up copy of the first volume of the Rumik World Trilogy. So this is the first of three, obviously. The other two I haven't found for a good price. They tend to go for a lot more than I'd like to pay, but I got this one for very discounted price since it is in quite a uh, beat up condition. Uh, pages are almost falling out. There's, you know, creasing on the spine. The cover you can see is all bent up and stuff, but it is good for a reader copy for someone like me that just wants to enjoy these works by Rumiko Takahashi that I haven't gotten to enjoy yet. The other manga that I have is uh, something, it was a pretty cool find on eBay um, for really cheap, which is cool because this one also goes usually a little bit more than what I paid. Um, Years ago, I found volumes two and four of My The Psychic Girl at a half-price bookstore, and I never found the other two, and I just was waiting and waiting, and then eventually the other day, I randomly decided to look on eBay, and I found a lot that was only volumes one and three, so exactly the other volumes that I needed. Um, and so I was able to get those, and I'm really excited to have completed this set. This is a manga that I've never read before. I have read some work by the artist Ryoichi Ikigami before. I've read his uh, Crying Freeman series. So I'm looking forward to trying this out, see what I think about it. Um, because it's an older one that I've, like I said, I've never read before. So I thought that was really cool. It seemed like a sign that I needed to pick these up since it was a lot that was only the half of the volumes that I needed. So that's the manga that I had. Um, so moving into the comics, I have a couple of older books and a couple of newer books. The older ones I grabbed because I made a video on the channel about a month ago talking about my favorite Batman stories. And it kind of made me think about some of the Batman books that I don't have on my shelf. And I was looking for a couple of cheaper volumes of some of the stuff that I'm missing. And so one of the ones that I picked up was the Red Hood, The Lost Days miniseries. Now this is a cheap paperback that collects, I think it was a six issue miniseries that's talking about Jason Todd becoming the Red Hood. It is written by Judd Winnick, um, who is the same writer that did the Under the Red Hood arc, so he's the one who kind of repopularized and brought back Jason Todd from the dead after he was gone for so long. So I've never read that. I heard good things about it, especially if you're a fan of that storyline, so I am looking forward to reading that little paperback. And then I also got a thin hardcover. This is a story that I have read and I do own in paperback, but I found the hardcover for a good price considering I've seen it going up in price lately. So if you don't have this one and you want it, I recommend probably jumping on it pretty soon. And that is the Gates of Gotham hardcover. This is deluxe edition by Scott Snyder, and I think this is also the first published work by Kyle Higgins, who co-writes with Snyder. Has uh, artwork from Trevor McCarthy, really nice art on the interior here. Um, this is a story that's set right before the New 52, and kind of gives little teases towards some of the stuff that Snyder would wind up doing in his New 52 Batman run. Um, it's got beautiful artwork, so it makes sense why they would put this into the deluxe edition. I'm happy to add this to my shelf because prior I only had the little paperback edition. So like I said, this one is starting to go up in price as far as I've seen on like eBay and Amazon. So if you would like to own this, I would recommend jumping on pretty soon. And then as far as a couple of newer books that I got, we have The Flash Savage Velocity. This is the first uh, collection of the 
uh, Wally West era on the Flash. Not first as in the first time they've ever collected anything on that, but this is volume one. This collects the first 18 issues plus the annual of that series when Wally West comes on to take over as the Flash after the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths. And um, in this book, we have some issues written by Mike Barron. And then after that, William Meisner Loeb's takes over. And I think Loeb's writes the series until Mark Wade takes over. I'm not 100% sure, so someone can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But I think he writes the series all the way until that first uh, issue by Wade. And we have most of Wade's material collected already across the seven paperback editions. There should be three of these nice thick volumes to bring us up to that first issue by Wade. And then as far as Wade goes, there should be one more collection of material from him. And then once that is collected, we'll have almost every issue of the Wally West Flash series. Of course, after Wade, the major run is Jeff Johns, which we have across the Omnibus editions, both different editions of that. And we have that across uh, several paperback editions as well. Um, but there is some material after Wade that's never been collected, um, a bunch of shorter runs by a bunch of other uh, creators and stuff that took over after he was done and wrote the series until it ended uh, prior to the whole Flash rebirth and uh, when Barry Allen comes back and stuff like that. So I wanted to put all of that uh, out there just to say that we are almost done collecting the entirety of Wally West's adventures as The Flash. And then the last new book I've got this time is a nice thick omnibus edition, and that is the Heroes Reborn, The Return Omnibus. Now this is the conclusion of what was started, basically an onslaught. So we have onslaught and that leads to the Heroes Reborn era where the heroes are no longer in the 616 Earth and they exist on a separate Earth. And the Heroes Reborn era was collected in, I've got the Omnibus Edition right above my finger here. Um, so this acts as the end of that era. This is kind of the follow-up to that stuff. This collects not only the material that you know comes out from that, kind of leads towards the heroes coming back to Earth, but also collects um, some material from other titles that kind of relate to the Heroes Reborn era and the Heroes Reborn universe. Um, and then there's a chunk of issues in here that has never been collected before, which is the reason that I bought it. And I'll go over that here. The, the contents, because I don't know off the top of my head, is uh, Heroes Reborn The Return 1 through 4, Thor Annual 99, Heroes Reborn Doomsday, Ashima, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word correctly, um, Masters of Evil, Rebel, Remnants, Young Allies, and Doom. Fantastic Four, numbers 25 and 31. Doom, numbers 1 through 3. Doom, The Emperor Returns, 1 through 3. And then these are the issues that are in here that are really the main reason why I wanted this book, and that's Thunderbolts 51 through 52, 60 through 62, 64, 66, 68, 70, and 72, and 74. Um, those have never been collected anywhere before, and I'm a huge Thunderbolts fan. I have almost every single Thunderbolts collection in my uh, library but I don't have those issues because they've never been collected before. So I'm hoping that eventually the rest of the stuff does get collected, but at least we have all of that material that does relate back to the whole Heroes Reborn story and the return and all of that. Um, we also have Exiles 81 and 82, Onslaught Reborn numbers 1 through 5, Onslaught Unleashed 1 through 4, and Marvel Spotlight Heroes Reborn slash Onslaught Reborn. So a lot of great 90s material in here. And like I said, if you're a fan of the Thunderbolts, this is the only place that you'll find those issues of the Thunderbolts. So this one belongs on the shelf next to the one that I was pointing at earlier. That's where I have it shelved in my collection. Um, if you're a big fan of that era, which I know that era doesn't have a ton of fans, but the ones who do enjoy it do enjoy it quite a bit, then this is a must have for you. It has a lot of awesome 90s artwork from people like Salvador Laraca and uh, Mike McCone and people like that, um, and a bunch of awesome creators and stuff like Fabian Nicieza, Joe Casey, Joe Kelly, uh, Chris Claremont, Peter David are involved in this. So there's a lot of stuff to enjoy for fans of that era. Now, moving forward, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about some action figures that I picked up. I don't talk about action figures too much on this channel, if at all. I don't think I've had a single video where I did but I do collect a bunch of figures. Mainly, I'm a collector of the Marvel Legends X-Men line. I'm just gonna turn the camera so you guys can see that most of my Marvel Legends X-Men figures I have displayed uh, atop the shelf over there. So I, in, I don't have everything, I don't have every single figure, but I'm a fan of those because the X-Men is my favorite comic franchise. So 
I collect most of those as they come out. I'm, I'm about a wave behind right now. I don't have any of the Sugar Man wave and I don't have some of the, the special um, individual figures that have come out, but I picked some up recently and I was really excited about them. So I wanted to talk about them here. So first, um, there's a store in, if you're from the North Texas area or the DFW area, definitely if you're a figure collector go check out dallas vintage toys they have a bunch of older stuff as well as a bunch of newer stuff and i grabbed a couple of figures from there um they had the black costume jim lee storm uh which is a very simple just black variant of the white costume storm that we got uh, i think last year but i love this because she goes perfectly with my gold team from the 90s x-men and she does come with the blue lightning which looks really great and of course the cloth cape just like the white one so just a color variation there's nothing as far as a sculpt goes i think they're both pretty much um identical but i love this i love that sculpt and this one is just as nice so yeah it was nice to have that variation so now i can have two storms to put on two different spots on the shelf and another color variation figure is the gray beast now this one as well as being a color variant also comes with some pretty cool accessories. He has that book there, and then you can see he's got some glasses that are on. I have him in kind of a reading position pushing up his glasses because the glasses, I don't know if this is universal, but mine don't stay on at all. You have to have him holding them or pushing them up or something like that. But I love the articulation on this figure and on the blue beast figure. Um, he does also come with the variant savage head, which I think I have somewhere. Oh, here it is. So you can have him looking more savage or you can have him looking um, more friendly and studious, uh, which, you know, on this one, I think I'm going to put the savage head on him and I'm going to give the glasses and the book to the blue beast because I feel like that to me makes a little bit more sense. But just like with Storm, I like having these two variant ones because they can then have spots with two different teams so I can have gray beast with one of the older teams while the blue beast is with the 90s team even though during the time that he had turned gray he wasn't on really an x-men team but it is still fun to have him over there um but yeah this is a really great figure if you're a beast fan if you're a fan of the classic gray version of the beast um before he turned blue then definitely grab that figure now the other stuff that i bought this was really exciting because i had been holding off on buying the age of apocalypse wave the uh sugar man build a figure wave for quite a while and my brother-in-law had texted me and said, hey man, I think that wave is discounted at Target. So I found myself at a Target yesterday and he was saying, you know, $13.99, $14 or whatever for each of these figures, which is already a good discounted price. But I found most of the wave, five out of the seven figures for $10 each. So I had to jump on those. $10 each for $20 figures is a great deal. And then he found a sixth out of the seven figures that I needed at another location. So in the next week or two, I'll probably grab that from him. And now I'm only missing one. So let me take a look at these figures. I will admit this is not my favorite wave of the um, Marvel Legends X-Men figures. I feel like most of them are pretty much just recycled bucks with slight paint applications um recycled accessories and stuff like that and honestly they don't really come with accessories um aside from the stuff that's on their bodies so that was kind of disappointing as well um so the first one here this is probably the most simple of the figures we have morph morph of course from the age of apocalypse is also known as being a member of the exiles it looks like they just use the classic cyclops buck but paint over with some black application on there he even has the big boots and stuff and his cape is straight up from magneto and it's kind of awkward because if you plug the peg into the hole in the back it kind of floats and looks a little awkward on him so i decided to let it just rest on his shoulders so he's pretty simple he doesn't come with any accessories aside from the cape um but for fans of morph for fans of the exiles that is a good figure to have and you can put him alongside blink because we got that from one of the previous waves um next this one is a really great sculpt but she doesn't stand up very well and she didn't come with any accessories because she comes with the biggest pieces of the builder figure and that is jean gray i love the way that her face looks with the paint applications on her face and the hair sculpt is really nice um, the shoulder pads on her costume look really great as well, although they are rather limiting for her movement. You can't move her hands or arms very up very far. And she does have the recycled hands that most of the telekinetic characters um, tend to have, or most characters that use uh, psychic abilities tend to have as far as the females go. And like I said, she's a little, I don't know if she's top heavy because of her shoulder pads or what it is, but she doesn't stand up very well. 
Um, it took me a while to get her to stand up on my shelf when I was displaying her because she kept falling forward. Um, next, I've got, this one's pretty cool, has a lot of cool factors to the, uh, the sculpt and stuff, and that is Sunfire. I really love his mask, the head with the flames coming out behind it. He's got this kind of flamed collar going around his uh, shoulders. And then I think that these are original sculpts for the arms with the flames and the hands with the flames coming off of them. Um, so that's really cool as well. I really appreciate when they uh, make new sculpts, new pieces and stuff. But otherwise, I think this is the same buck from the Iceman, the newer Iceman figure with the spiky hair. Um, just made orange instead of the bluish color. He's not as flimsy though. My my Iceman, I don't know if it's universal, but he was really flimsy. This one is pretty rigid, but also that's a negative because he's so rigid that he's one of those that pops, his joints pop and stuff. So that kind of limits his movements. You can kind of hear the pop on his ankles um, because you can only place him on any of those joints where it pops and stuff. You can't have it between the pops. Um, but otherwise, aside from that, this is a really cool figure. He didn't come with any accessories or anything, but I think that he's pretty solid, just the sculpt on its own. Um, next, we have, of course, a Wolverine figure. We get Weapon X. There is a Wolverine pretty much with every single uh, set that they put out. He came with one accessory. You can remove his claw from the uh, severed hand and instead have one without claws. Uh, but aside from that, it's a pretty standard Wolverine buck, just painted with the different colors from Weapon X. The head and hair is completely new sculpt, but it is kind of awkward because if you look on the back, you can see his neck around the peg and stuff because the way that they sculpted his hair, I think it's so that you can adjust his head so that he's looking a little bit more um, forward, like he's a little more feral or something like that. Uh, so you can pose him kind of like that since he did seem to be a little more feral in the Age of Apocalypse. I guess that's why they do it, but then it looks a little awkward on his chin because again, you can see the peg. I wish they would have just given him maybe a secondary head instead of making uh, this one looks so awkward around the peg on the neck and stuff, or maybe adjust the peg so that it doesn't look as awkward. Uh, I feel like there was a better way they could have done this, um, but otherwise, like I said, it's just another Wolverine figure recycled body with a new head. Um, so fans of Wolverine will be happy with that, and then of course, they have to do a Weapon X figure if they're doing Age of Apocalypse. You can't do Age of Apocalypse and not do Weapon X. The last of the single figures that I got is my favorite one, and that is Wild Child. Um, I was surprised how much I like this one, but I love the sculpt on the head and the hair and his collar there. His hands with the claws and his feet with his claws are awesome as well. They use a, I don't know if it's a new sculpt, it's a thinner body. I guess maybe it's the same sculpt as some of the Spider-Man figures or some of the younger male figures will use, um, but it's very different from the majority of the male bodies that we get from the X-Men line. So I really appreciated this. Um, he is a lot smaller because eventually I'm sure that they're going to be releasing a saber tooth that you can have him buddy buddy with, maybe hang out on his shoulders and stuff. And I'm absolutely sure that they'll do saber tooth because the chain accessory that he comes with, you can see is molded in a way that it's meant to fit around an arm and on a hand, which is perfect for the way that saber tooth in the age of apocalypse, um, would hold the chain for Wild Child. Now, my brother-in-law found me X-Man, so I don't have that one, and then the only one I need now is Dark Beast. X-Man comes with the secondary set of arms for Sugar Man, and then Dark Beast just comes with the hammer. So that said, I have Sugar Man pretty much built aside from the accessory and the extra arms, and he's a pretty solid figure. This is a really well sculpted figure. You can see his face really ugly, um, but his teeth, his hair, his eyebrows, the tongue are all really well sculpted. He even has the pins on his uh, uh, suspenders there. Belt is well sculpted. Each of the arms is pretty well sculpted with some arm hair sculpted in there. Um, so this is a really nicely put together figure. The downside is he's got these puny little legs, so he doesn't stand up in any different position aside from just standing straight up and even then if you don't have the the feet in the right position he'll fall forward or fall back um but i'm looking forward to getting those extra arms and really having him 
posing as a pretty menacing character. Um, I, I really like it. I like this figure. This is a cool build a figure. I'm glad that they did this. And I'm hoping that in the future they'll do another Age of Apocalypse wave so that they can include stuff like maybe a new version of Holocaust, uh, of course, do Sabretooth, Cyclops. There's so many figures, so many characters during Age of Apocalypse that they could do Gambit, of course, um, that I'm sure they could fill out an entire second wave of just Age of Apocalypse figures. So anyway, that's everything for this week. That's the figures, the manga, the comics. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that. If you enjoyed me talking about figures, like I said, I usually don't talk about my action figures at all on this channel, but if you enjoyed that, I can do more videos videos showing my current collection of my X-Men figures and other stuff. I do have like Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles and Spider-Man figures and stuff like that that I can show um, and some Batman figures as well. Um, or if you didn't like this, then I guess don't tell me that you want to see more of it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought. Uh, what stuff did you pick up this week? Do you have these figures? Did you enjoy the Age of Apocalypse wave? What Age of Apocalypse figures would you like to see if they do a second wave? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, big thanks to my Patreon subscribers. You guys are awesome and help me to make this channel better. Thank you so much for supporting me. If you like what I do here and would like to support me as well, link down below to my Patreon will show you the benefits that you get all the cool extra stuff. And of course, the biggest benefit is you get to directly help me make my channel better. Of course, also a huge shout out to the Omnibus Collectors Network. That is the channel that I do awesome work with a bunch of really awesome YouTubers every single week. We do multiple videos per week where we talk about comics, manga, anime, movies, television, video games, all kinds of stuff we talk about multiple times a week. So check us out over there. If you like what I do on this channel, you'll definitely love them over there. And of course, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for deciding to click on and watch my video and spend this time with me. I hope you enjoyed the content. And if you like this content, definitely check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel so you are going to be notified for every single video that I have that comes out. Sugar Man just fell on his face. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this new look at some figures. Like I said, something I've never done before. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.